Hi there, welcome to the Own Your Expertise interview series. I'm Emily Crookston, owner and decider of all things at The Pocket PhD. I'm the ghostwriter for Rebels, Renegades, and Mavericks. And I love helping experts with big ideas get those ideas out of their heads and into the world. So today I'm sitting down with Antonia Bate. Antonia is a storyteller and content coach. Tell us a little bit more about who you are and who you like to work with. Yay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much, Emily, for having me. Uh, this is super exciting. Um, yeah, I've been working in marketing for hmm, almost 10 years now. And um, a little over a year ago, uh, started to go freelancing and doing it basically all by myself. Um, mostly because I realized that um, the agency world wasn't for me. And what I also realized is that the people that need marketing most are the ones who hate doing it. And I'm one of those people. I hate marketing. Oh, interesting. I, okay. I yeah. think it feels wrong. Mm -hmm. I just don't like putting myself out there. I like talking about the things I do but I don't like talking about myself. I always tell people I love having attention for my projects, but I don't love having the attention on myself. And uh -huh. there are so many people out there who feel the same. So, and then I realized that I actually have something that can empower them to do it without feeling wrong mm -hmm. about it. And that's the ability to tell stories and specifically stories that are that turn your content into something that feels honest and mm -hmm. vulnerable and approachable. Um, because you can still, you know, we tell stories every day. Whenever we tell something to each other, it's usually wrapped in some kind of story. Right. The question is, how good is it? Does it resonate? Do I remember it? And it starts to feel authentic and people actually start talking about themselves and about their businesses online without really noticing that they're actually doing marketing. <laughs> That's the ideal place where I would like them to be, is that they yeah. post something and they feel, they feel good about it. Very cool, yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you're in Germany, um, mm -hmm. right? So do, are your clients mostly local to you or do you work with people all around the world? Um, I do have about 40% non-German speaking oh. clients. A lot yeah. of them are in the EU, um, mm -hmm. the Netherlands, England, um, all that. Currently, I cannot work with Americans or anyone yeah. outside the American Union, uh, the, the European Union because of tax regulations. I do, I, I have a pro bono program running for artists and creatives oh, nice. right now and so because they don't have to pay me I can pretty much work with anyone so I see okay you want to do that. how would you describe your path to becoming an expert so I know you said you had, did the agency life for a while and then you gave that up so how does that tie into sort of your story um, well an I ended up in the agency world more or less by accident mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to be a filmmaker I so I went to film school, I learned how to do the craft, I went into television and film, did that for a long time, and had to drop out of it because it just didn't go well with my life. Um, this is not working for me anymore, I need something else. And by accident, I stumbled into a job that was pretty close to it. They were doing marketing videos and you know commercials. Oh, yeah. But what it's all, what it's always come down to is that I just love telling stories. Um, so I'm very much in this whole structure. How do how do, how do stories work? Why do they work the way they work? Why what do they do to our brain? I was very 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 early on before anyone in the marketing uh, industry was ever talking about storytelling. I was taught that wow. stories have. They do something to your brain. Your brain chemistry changes. Your hormone level changes when you listen to a good story. Ah, this is one of my favorite questions. So I asked, what's your die in a ditch belief? So my concept of a die in a ditch belief is a belief that something that you've thought about long and hard and something that you'd be willing to defend if someone, you know, challenged it. So tell us, what's, what's your die in a ditch belief? <laughs> well, I, you call it, the, your belief, I would call it my purpose, and uh, I believe that we are way better together. Um, and I also believe that stories is what 
are what draws us draw us together. I also believe that kindness is what we actually need to make great things happen. And it might sound quite simple, but it does take an effort to be kind. Um, it does take conscious decisions every day when you get up and it starts with yourself, be kind to yourself, be kind to others and always assume good in others mm -hmm. because we can't work together if we don't, if we aren't willing to trust each other. Do you see the kindness tying into the work that you do with clients as well? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's about creating a comfortable warm environment in which we can communicate and share what's important um, and also be vulnerable. I believe in vulnerability, especially in marketing, because we're drawn to people who feel honest and approachable. And that requires vulnerability, even in businesses. And we should all come together. We should be different. We should be you know, diverse. We should have all kinds of different ideas. And when we come together and we tap into this creative genius that I believe we all have, in very different ways, but we all have it, then we can start and do something and build something that's much bigger than ourselves. And then we're talking, then things come together. Mm -hmm. And doing that in the form of stories does that very well because stories are actually tales of someone struggling, mm -hmm. someone trying to do something. If you think of your favorite stories, the main character, the hero, they struggle for 75% of the story, they're not getting it right. Yeah. They think they know how it works and they have to go all that way to that point in the story where they're sitting on the edge of the road, crying, drunk, no money, everything's gone, the world has come to an end and now we're, we can all go home because the story is over because it didn't work. <laughs> And then what they do at that point is they realize something, they learn something about themselves, they see the truth, and then everything works out fine. And that's what that's why we consume stories. We want to see that transformation. People always talk about storytelling being great because it's about a problem being solved and we looking at the problem, and that's true. But why the the real reason why we're drawn to stories is transformation. Yeah, I really like that because when I work with my uh, book clients, you know, we're writing business books. So really, it could be very technical. There doesn't have to be any story in there. It could be a very simple how to. But I'm always asking them, you know, OK, well, what's a client story? Tell me a client success story. We should put this in the book because that's the stuff that people connect with. You're absolutely right. Why is someone buying your book? Because of the stories you're telling and how real you're making it and how easy it is for them to take those lessons and apply them to their own business and their own lives, right? Thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. I've really enjoyed it, Antonia. Um, Thank you. And, yes. And tell us where we can learn more about you. You can find me um, at the moment because, you know, coronavirus has brought us all online. And so yeah. now I'm on LinkedIn and you can find me there. Um, I'm there almost every day. Um, my website uh, is usually a place to start and you can also find me on Instagram, which is like my secret little safe haven. Um, my Instagram handle is Tony Visual. Great. Thank you so much, Antonia. I really Thank appreciate you. it.